Okay, our video today is going to be on hell, on if it exists and what is it. Is it eternal torment? Is it just the grave? There's various uh, words in Greek and Hebrew uh, that people like to use in, in place of hell. Um, you'll hear things like Sheol, Tartarus, Hades, and Gehenna. Those are four places, uh, four words I should say, uh, that are found in the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts. And when those words were translated into the English Bible, a lot of times it was translated as hell. And uh, some Bibles nowadays don't translate it into hell. They, they instead do what's called a transliteration where they take the Greek and Hebrew letters and instead of giving you the word in English, they give you what, those, what the word in English that those letters sound like. So Greek letters don't look like our letters. You know, it's not A, B, C, D, and neither do Hebrew letters. But if you pronounce the word in, in Hebrew, for instance, like uh, Hades, uh, it's not spelled H-A-D-E-S. That's just using English letters to pronounce the word as it sounds in Hebrew. That's a transliteration. Now, a translation is taking that word and saying this is the English equivalent like hell. So we're going to try to figure out what hell is in uh some, some people say it's just the grave, meaning, you know, where you're buried. Other people say it's a place of torment and fire. Uh, let's see what the Bible has to say about it. We have a lot of places to turn, so we're going to go going right away here. I don't just want to give you one verse. I want to give you many, many verses and see if the Bible can shed some light on the subject. All right, we're in Job uh, chapter 8, or I'm sorry, Job uh, chapter 11, verse 8. Uh, it says, It is as high as heaven, what canst thou do, deeper than hell, what canst thou know? So we don't know what hell is here. We just know that it, it's deep. So it's down. It's somewhere. Could be the grave. Could be some other place. Let's go to Psalm 55. A lot of verses to cover. Psalm 55. Try not to give you my opinion or my interpretation. I'm trying to give you what the book says. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Um, last thing I want to do is, is give you what I think. Uh Psalm 55, verse 15. The Bible says, Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for their wickedness is the dwellings among men. So the wicked people, it says wicked, they're wicked, so they should, uh, death should seize upon them quickly, and they should go down into hell. Now, hell could be the grave, could be something else, but it's a negative connotation. It has to do with wickedness. All right, let's go to Psalm 86. Got to move, got to move. Psalm 86, verse 13. For great is thy mercy, talking about God, toward me, and thou delivered my soul from the lowest hell. So hell is low, and uh, that's all we know. Could be the grave. Doesn't really make sense so much to, for it to be the grave, uh, because I guess it could be a lower grave. So your grave could be 10 feet down instead of 6 feet down. I don't know. So this one is maybe the first verse that indicates something different uh, where it says lowest hell. So whatever hell is maybe has different levels because there's a lower part of it. But we don't know. Uh, let's go to Proverbs. Let's got to read more verses. Can't just read one verse and make a conjecture. Got to read the whole book. Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse uh, 27. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. Verse 26, for she hath ca cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. So this, this lady here is kind of a negative connotation. She killed some strong men. Many people have been cast down and says her house is the way of hell. So negative well, where's hell? Going down to the chambers of death. So it's down. Uh, let's go to Amos, book of Amos. It's a minor prophet in the Old Testament. It's one of those, there's a bunch of small books right in a row. Luckily, we turned right to it. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9, verse 2. Though they dig into hell, well, that could be a grave. Thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. So every time we see 
hell, it's down. It's down, it's low, it's digging, it's, you know, uh, bottom down. So hell is down, we know that. Uh, let's look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 is the first time the word hell is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, this is called the law of first mention. The first time a word is mentioned in the Bible usually sets the tone for how that word is used throughout the rest of the, the book, if it's a positive or a negative connotation. 32, Deuteronomy 32, verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, this is God talking, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her incense, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. And I will heap mischiefs upon them, and I will spend mine arrows upon them, and they shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and bitter destruction. The first time the word hell shows up in the Bible, it has a connotation of fire, and kindling, and destruction, and burning, and heat. All right. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 32. Ezekiel chapter 32. So, hell could be the grave. It could just be someone's body going down into the earth. Um, we know it's down. We saw right there that it has, a, it has a connotation of being fire, but it doesn't tell us much yet. Um, Ezekiel 32, verse 17, says, And it came to pass also in the twelfth year and the fifteenth day of the month that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, well for a multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and their daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. So he's, he's talking about some Egyptians here, and he's really talking about Pharaoh, if you read this whole chapter, but we don't have time to do that. Um, but as we go down here, and we read uh, about people going down into the pit, we'll pick it up in verse uh, 29. There is Edom, which is, Edom is uh, the area south of, Jerusalem, uh, there's a valley there, Gehenna's there, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah was there, Sodom and Gomorrah were burnt with fire. Uh, so there is Edom, her kings, and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain with the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down into the pit. There be princes, so this pit could be the grave, don't know. There be princes of the north, all them and all the Zidonians which are gone down with the slain in their terror. They are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that are slain of the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude. And Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God, for I have caused my terror in the land of the living. And he shall be laid into the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and his multitude, saith the Lord. So it says right here that these people that go down into the pit, and we don't know what that is. It could be the grave. It doesn't say hell. It just says the pit. Uh, but Pharaoh is going to be killed with the sword in verse 32. Uh, with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and his multitude. So Pharaoh and his multitude are slain with the sword. But look what it says in verse 31. All those people that are slain with the sword, Pharaoh shall be comforted to see them all those that go down into the pit with him. How is Pharaoh, if he's dead, going to be comforted to see people go down into a pit with him? He's dead. That's curious. Now, there's another verse in here I, I skipped. Um, where was it at? Uh, I don't want to take it too long here because if I can't find it, uh, we're going to move on. Oh... I don't see it here. Strong man, Asher, the graves, the graves are set about the grave fallen, or Elam. Yeah, I'm just going to move on because I can't find it. There was another verse I wanted to point out, and I should have marked it. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, so, so Pharaoh's going to be comforted with them, but there was another verse in here that said, uh, man, I wish I could find it, but I don't want to waste too much time. I should have marked it. They have set their in the graves round about them. Uh, weapons and they, sh and they shall be broken and eat them in her kings. 
and the princes of all of them. Yeah, I don't have time. All right, moving on. Uh, wasting too much time here. Got a lot to cover. Uh, where are we at? So we're in Ezekiel. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 23. So Pharaoh's going to be comforted to see people go into the pit with him, which is going to be kind of hard if the pit is just a grave. Uh, he's, let's go to, what I say? Proverbs chapter 23. This is where if I had editing software, I could have cut it out right there and look to see and edit this, but I don't have time to do that. We're just we're just moving along here. Uh, these are kind of ad lib. I have some verses written down, but I'm not not rehearsed anything. We're just going with it. Proverbs 23, verse 14. All right. Uh, let's go to verse 13. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. For thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Well, if hell is the grave, and that just means death and going down into the grave, so pretty much what that's saying, look guys, if you spank your kids, they're never going to die. Because if you spank them, you'll deliver a soul from hell. I don't think anybody thinks it's, that spanking their kids is going to make them eternal. This is obviously something different. Hell here is not the grave. Because you're going to deliver their soul from hell if you spank them. So we saw that Pharaoh, when he went to hell, or the pit, it didn't say hell, uh, he was comforted to see other people with him. So Pharaoh went somewhere that he died, he was slain, but he still had consciousness. So it was more than just a grave. Some people think that when you die, you go to hell, which is just a grave, and you don't have any consciousness. That doesn't seem to be true because of Pharaoh. And there was another verse in that, in that chapter where it said after the people died, um, they looked upon other folks. I think it was looked. They did something. I can't remember if it was looked or spoke or something. They saw something. But it was saying they did something even after they were dead. So they had consciousness. Um, but here it says, if you spank your child, you'll deliver a soul from hell. Hell obviously is something different than the grave in this, in this text because no one spanking their kid gives them eternal life. Um, now let's go to 1 Samuel. So we know hell is down. We know that it's some sort of state of consciousness. Uh, it, 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 it can refer to something other than the grave um, because you can't spank your kid and give him eternal life. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28. Uh, we're going to go to verse 7. It says, Then Saul... Uh, let me just give you a rundown of this because we have so many verses to cover. So Saul, Samuel is a prophet of God. He died. Uh, Saul is the king. God's not talking to Saul anymore. He wants to talk to Samuel, but Samuel's dead. So he goes and finds a witch and he wants the witch to bring up Samuel uh, so he can talk to him even after Samuel's dead. So Samuel obviously has some sort of state of consciousness even after he's dead because the witch could not bring Samuel to talk to Saul if Samuel didn't still have some sort of state of consciousness. So Samuel went somewhere other than just the earth, all right? Um, let's pick it up in verse 11. Then said the woman, which is the witch, whom shall I bring up to thee? And he said, Saul said, bring me up Samuel, which is the prophet that was dead. And when the woman saw Samuel, she saw him, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake unto Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. So real quick background, Saul wanted, didn't want any witches in the kingdom anymore. Uh, and he made a decree that said there could be no witches. So he went to see a witch, uh, and she said, Oh my gosh, you're Saul, you deceive me. But then Saul said in verse 13, uh, Be not afraid. So he doesn't really care. He just wants to know what she saw because God's not talking to him. And he wants to talk to Samuel. And said, Be not afraid for what sawest thou. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of, meaning Samuel? And she said... An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself, and Samuel, and Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? So when Samuel died, he went down somewhere, and he was brought back up by the gods. It said, and remember the witch said, I saw gods ascending, and they brought Samuel up. So when you died in the Old Testament, you could have went to... Somewhere down in the heart of the earth where there, it seems, was some sort of, maybe there's torment, who knows. Uh, but there was a place called hell uh, that Pharaoh went to, and we know Pharaoh is bad. 
And then there's another place that Samuel went to, and we know that Samuel is good. Well, why didn't Samuel go to heaven? Well, in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ didn't die yet. He didn't pay for the sins of anybody yet. So while the folks in the Old Testament had their sins forgiven, God forgave them, they weren't cleansed. See, you and I in the New Testament, it says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Not only are we forgiven, we're clean. God sees us as sinless. And no sinless person, no person that has sin on them can go to heaven. So in the Old Testament, because Jesus Christ didn't die for these folks' sin yet, uh, they couldn't go to heaven, so they went down into the heart of the earth. Um, but they didn't go to hell. Where did they go? Well, let's go to Luke chapter 16. Got to move, got to move. Got lots of ground to cover. Remember, Samuel was brought up. You know, when Jesus Christ died, it says that he went down to preach to the, to the spirits in prison and he led captivity captive. So when Jesus Christ down, when, when he died, he went down, to, down in the heart of the earth first and preached to somebody. Well, who did he preach to? I think he might have preached to at least Samuel because we know Samuel was down there. Um, and there was probably some other uh, good Old Testament prophets that were down there as well. Um, Luke chapter 16, verse 22. We have the story of the rich man in Lazarus. And it came to pass that the beggar died. So there was, a good, there was a beggar named Lazarus, which we see in verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Jesus gave him a name. So if this was a parable, I don't know why Jesus would give the man a name. Because usually when Jesus spoke parables, he said, you know, hey, I'm going to give you a parable. He didn't say that here. He said, there was a man named Lazarus. And there was a rich man. All right. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried into the angel, by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man died also and was buried. So the rich man went to the grave. But what happened to the rich man? His body was in the grave, but verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. So the rich man's body went to the grave, but his soul was in hell, and his soul lift up his eyes, and he was in torment. He was down in hell. And we know that hell is down by all the other verses we looked at in the Bible. And he seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Well, we, well, Lazarus died, but Lazarus didn't go to hell. But he did go down into the heart of the earth. Because the rich man saw Lazarus in a place called Abraham's bosom. And how did, how did, Lazarus, how did, the, how did Lazarus get there? Verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Remember when we read about Samuel in the last... Uh, uh, text we just read where the witch said I see gods ascending so these angels or gods bring people up and bring people down into Abraham's bosom that's the cross reference that's how your Bible works all right let the Bible interpret itself I'm not interpreting anything I'm telling you what the Bible says the Bible says Samuel went down the witch saw angels he went down the Bible says Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom, which is down because we looked at the other verses that said hell is down. And we know that Lazarus was able to see the rich man and the rich man was in hell. No interpretation. That's what the book says, okay? Um, I'm not giving you what I think it says. I'm not trying to spiritualize it. I'm just saying this is what the Bible says. All right. Uh, let's go to... Um, We're going to go to Second Kings chapter 23. So what do we know so far? We know that hell is down. We know it's a place of torment because Jesus said it was. Um, and I mean, if you think Jesus is lying, then I guess, you know, that's a whole different subject. But we know it's a place of torment. We know there's a, uh, in the Old Testament, folks went to a place called Abraham's bosom, which is where uh, Lazarus went, uh, which was a place of comfort, it said. Uh, our assumption is that's where Samuel went to. Uh, Samuel was an Old Testament prophet and a good guy. I don't know why God would send him to hell when he was a prophet and did everything God wanted him to do. So the only thing we can surmise is Samuel was also in this place called Abraham's bosom. And we know that when Jesus died, the Bible said he descended first into the lower parts of the earth and preached to the spirits and he led them captivity captive. All right. All right. Uh, where are we at? We're in 2 Kings 23. 2 Kings chapter 23. 2 Kings chapter 23. 
Oh, we got to move. We have so much more stuff to talk about. Uh, 2 Kings 23, verse 10. One more page back. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter pass through the fire into Molech. All right, so this valley of Hinnom, let's talk about this. So we, we talked about Sheol and Hades. Uh, those are translated as hell. And when the, when the folks who translated the Bible translated those, uh, they used the word by the context of the verse, because some people said those should be translated as grave. Well, you can't translate it as grave because grave doesn't make sense when you have some sort of consciousness, because you're not conscious in the grave. So it was translated as hell. When the folks translated this, they had the whole Bible they had to look at, and they had to look at the context. And what is the context? So we saw there, there is consciousness after death. All right, so Hades and Sheol was translated as hell. Now, there's something that Jesus Christ says quite a few times, which is Gehenna. All right, when he talks about fire and brimstone and all that, he says Gehenna. He doesn't say Hades. He doesn't say uh, Sheol. He says Gehenna. Now, Gehenna is an actual place. It's a city. It's a town. Uh, it's an area south of, uh, south of the Dead Sea in, in the land of Edom. Um, and in Hebrew, in the Old Testament, instead of saying Gehenna, Gehenna is how you say it in Greek, you said Hinnom, verse 10. All right, so this is Gehenna. This is the place that Jesus talks about a lot when he says it's going to be burning with fire and brimstone. Well, let's look and see what the Bible says about this Gehenna or this Hinnom. It says, uh, the child, uh, And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, Gehenna, that no man may make his son or his daughter pass through the fire. So in Hinnom... Folks made their kids pass through fire, all right? Now, this is talking about Josiah, the king, trying to get rid of all these places. He, he wanted to get rid of Hinnom so that no man might make his son or daughter pass through the fire to Molech because that's how you worship Molech. You killed your children by fire. You gave Molech a sacrifice, the god Molech, all right? All right, uh, let's go to Second Chronicles 28. So right now we see that this valley of Gehenna or Hinnom has a fire connotation associated with it. Second Chronicles 28, verse 3. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of Hinnom, there's Gehenna again, and he burnt his children in fire after the abominations of the heathen. So in this valley of Hinnom, you have people being burned again. All right, Second Chronicles 33, a few chapters over. Second Chronicles 33, verse 6. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. There's Gehenna. People passing through fire again. Uh, Jeremiah 7.31 would be another instance where you uh, see the valley of Hinnom and people passing through fire. I'm not going to go there for the sake of time. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. And we're going to go to verse 45. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop the word toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the south field. Now this south field here, and this forest of the south field, uh, this, is, this is Gehenna, this is Hinnom, this is Edom, uh, as defined in other places of the Bible. So this is that same place that uh, people were pay making their children pass through the fire. All right, This is the south field, this is the valley of... Uh, like I said, Gehenna and Edom and all that area south of the Dead Sea. All right, so drop thy uh, word toward the south and prophesy against the forest of the south field. So this is prophesy, so something's going to take place in the future. And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will in the future kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched. And all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein, and all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it, meaning this fire that God kindles in this area, and it shall not be quenched. Then sighed I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, doth he not speak parables? So at some point in the future, God is going to kindle a fire in this area of Gehenna and Edom in the south field, 
And what Ezekiel says, it's, it's in verse 49, he says, you know, I'm going to say this, but they're going to say of me, doth he not speak parables? Isn't that exactly what they say in Luke chapter 16, where God, where Jesus Christ is talking about hell and Lazarus? They, a lot of people say, oh, he's just talking in a parable. It's funny that God put that in here, isn't it? To kind of catch those folks. All right. So, uh, so God's going to set Edom, the south field, on fire at some point in the future. And it's the fire is going to, quote, not be quenched. The flame shall not be quenched. Let's see if we can cross-reference that, because that's how you study the Bible. You see what the Bible has to say about the Bible. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, the last chapter in Isaiah, talks about things that happened in the last book of the Bible, the 66th book in the Bible. Just like Isaiah chapter 40 talks about things that happened in the 40th book of the Bible. Every chapter in Isaiah corresponds to a book in the Bible, but that's a whole other study for another time. Man didn't write the book. Um, let's see here, where do we want to go? We want to go to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, so in the future God's going to make new heavens and new earth. This happens in the millennium, uh, where God, uh, after his reign, makes a new heaven and a new earth. You can read about that in Revelation chapter 22, 21 and 22. Uh, for the sake of time, we're not going to go there, but that, that would be the cross-reference, new heavens and new earth. That's the end of the millennium, Revelation 21 and 22. Please read it. Um, well, I will make a new heavens and a new earth, uh, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. We just read about fire not being quenched in Ezekiel chapter 20, where God lights the south field or Edom, Gehenna, uh, on fire. Well, that fire that shall not be quenched, it says... They shall go forth. So this happens in the millennium when Jesus Christ comes back. And you know that because of the new heavens and new earth. They shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. And their worms shall not nigh, neither shall their fire be quenched. There's your cross reference to what we just read. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So in the millennium, you're going to be able to go see Jesus Christ. He's going to be sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. That's a whole other study for another time. Um, but when you go there, you're going to be able to walk past. Gehenna, which is going to be on fire, and see the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against God, because God's going to light it on fire. You will be able to see them. They're not in, so there's hell, and then there's something called the lake of fire. In Revelation, you say, you read that death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. So these are two different places. This lake of fire is here on earth. God lights it on fire. He lights the valley of Edom on fire, just like they did in the Old Testament, where they made people pass through the fire in Hinnom or Gehenna, Edom. That's all kind of one in the same place. Um, Isaiah 34, 1 through 10. Isaiah 34, 1 through 10. I don't think I went there. I don't remember. If I did, we'll just skip it. Isaiah, th no, I didn't. All right, Isaiah 34. Come near, ye nations, and hear and hearken unto me, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein and the world and all things that come from it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. This is the future. This hasn't happened yet, obviously. And his fury upon all their armies, and he has utterly destroyed them and delivered them to his to the slaughter. God has not slaughtered, destroyed all the nations yet. That's coming. All right. And their slain shall be cast out, and their stinks shall come up of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with blood, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's Revelation chapter 20 and 21. That's at the end of the millennium. There's our cross-reference. Read it. And all the hosts shall fall down, the host of heaven. That talks, that's talked about at the end of the, when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent in Revelation and Matthew and Daniel. All right, they're all there. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down to Idumea. Idumea is Edom. All right, it's another word for Edom. Edom is the land where Gehenna is. That's the south. Right, that's the south of the Dead Sea. You know what else happened at the Dead Sea? That was Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where Sodom and Gomorrah was in the land of Edom. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone rained down from heaven. Well, isn't that quite a coincidence? 
this fire and brimstone throughout the whole Bible is connected with this area that God is going to light on fire one more time. All right, so behold, there shall come down uh, from I, I do me or Edom and upon the people my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood and, in, and it is made fat with the fatness and the blood of the lambs and goats and the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath sacrificed in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea or Edom. And the unicorn shall come down with them and their bullocks and the bills and they shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. This is the day of the Lord when Jesus Christ comes back. And the year of the recompense for the controversy of Zion and the streams thereof, thereof of where? Of Idumea or Edom, where, is, where, where Gehenna is or Hinnom. The streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land shall become burning pitch it shall not be quenched day nor night the smoke there shall the smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation it shall lie waste none shall pass through it forever and ever god's going to light this place on fire when he comes back and that's going to be called uh, gehenna which is why Jesus Christ, when he talks about Gehenna a lot in the New Testament, says it's going to be on fire because he's literally going to do it when he comes back. This is what this is what is referred to as the lake of fire, all right, where it says, um, which we'll get to here uh, in a few verses when we get to the, to the New Testament verses. Um, so God's going to come back and he's going to light this place on fire. This place was lit on fire once before. This exact place, go back to Numbers. You know, when the Bible was put together by, oh, geez, I don't know, probably 40 different authors or so over a period of, uh, you know, 1,500 years on three different continents, and not everybody had the same books when other people were writing the books. And they gathered all these books together and stuck them together in the Bible, and it all goes together. Man didn't write this book. Numbers chapter 16, this place was on fire once before, this, this valley of Gehenna, uh, or Edom, all right? Let's go to, actually, let's go to Numbers chapter 13 here. And in Numbers 13, the Israelites, verse 45, the Amalekites, which are giants, which dwelt in the land of Edom. You can cross-reference that in Numbers chapter 14, Numbers chapter 13, and Joshua chapter 15. I don't have time to read them, um, that they dwelt in this area. But the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt in the hill, and smote them, them being Israel, and discomforted them even to Hormah. So the last place we see Israel is in Horma, which is in Edom, which is by Gehenna, which is the place that's going to be caught on fire, this whole valley, okay? All right, now we go to number 16. So they're in this area. What happens in Numbers chapter 16? Uh, Numbers chapter 16, verse 29. So there were some men that did some bad stuff, some priests, and Moses is... Uh, going to make a prediction here. He says, uh, Moses said in verse 28, Hereby ye know that the Lord hath sent me and do these works, for I have not done them of mine own nine. For if these men, men being the guys who did the bad stuff, die a common death of all men, or if they be vis visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, so Moses is saying, look, if these men die like all other normal men, because of the bad things they've done, you know that uh, God didn't send me to be a prophet. However, verse 30, but if God make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then shall you understand that these men have spoke the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder, and it was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. Their whole body went into the earth, guys. Not just their soul, their body. And their houses and all the men that appertain to Korah and all their gods. All right, so these men were swallowed alive into the earth. Verse 34, and all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of the men who went down. And they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So they were afraid. And there came out a fire from the Lord. There came out a fire from the earth. All right. When the earth opened up, a fire came out from the Lord. And consumed the 250 men. So in this area where men are going to be cast alive into, because remember in Isaiah ch chapter 66, you said you're going to look upon them 
to transgress against him in the millennium. God did this once before. In the same place, it's going to happen again, where not just the souls, but the bodies were swallowed up into earth, and the fire came out, and he lit that place on fire. And you thought the Bible was just a book to teach you how to live a good life. It's got so much more than that. It is eternal. No one will ever master it. Not even close. Not even close. There's way too much in there. The best man probably knows is a good like half a percent of what's actually in the Bible. All right. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Let's see if we can, where Jesus is going to talk about this Gehenna, this place. He's going to light it on fire when he comes back. And he's going to rule with a rod of iron, the Bible says. And if you do wrong, you get cast into the lake of fire, which is going to be Gehenna on earth. And people are going to see it. So uh, you better get saved if you're not saved. This is the best time to get saved. All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in him, what he did for you. Repent from what you've done and put your faith in the Lord. And you don't have to worry about any of this. But man, if you don't, it's going to get bad. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Now I'll learn a parable um, in Matthew. Oh, geez, I'm in Mark. Look where you're doing at. What you're doing here. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Jesus said, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. So, Right now, when you die, your body goes into the grave and your soul goes into hell. But Jesus said, there's going to come a time here. Fear him which is able to destroy body and soul in hell. When's the last time you saw someone's body go down into hell? Well, that, that was in what we just read in, in Numbers, where their body went alive into hell. In that valley of Edom there in Gehenna. That's going to happen again when Jesus Christ comes back. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 8 and 9. Wherefore, if thy hand offend thee, cut them off. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands and feet and be cast into everlasting fire. Remember, where the fire is not quenched, your body will be cast into the lake of fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire. So there's going to come a time, look, nobody's worried about this right now, right? No one's cutting their hand off because it offends them. That's because this is something that's going to happen in the future when Jesus Christ returns and sets up his kingdom, and lights that valley of Gehenna on fire, and it becomes the lake of fire with everlasting fire where the fire shall not be quenched. And your body will be cast in there, not just your soul. And he did that once before in Numbers, remember. Um, Revelation 19. This lake of fire, this Gehenna, Revelation 19. You're cast alive into it. It's something different than what happens now. That's why people get confused on the lake of fire versus hell. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. The Bible's got the answers. You just got to dig. Sometimes it's not so easy as just pointing out one verse. And the beast was taken. This is the Antichrist. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which deceived them which had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image, and they were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Remember, Jesus Christ lit the brimstone in it uh, in the valley of Gehenna. That's the lake of fire where you're cast alive. So the lake of fire is a little different than hell. In hell, you die, your body goes into the grave, your soul goes into hell, and you wait the final judgment. Now in the millennium, you're cast alive into the lake of fire. Um, all right, so we know Sheol, we know Hades, we know Gehenna. Sheol and Hades is hell. Gehenna is the lake of fire, which is on earth. Uh, let's see if we can figure out, uh, so there's different compartments, you know, there's different places in hell. There's Abraham's bosom, there's hell, 
Uh, there's something called the bottomless pit, Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That doesn't say hell, it says the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose up smoke. So the bottomless pit is in the earth, and smoke comes up, so it could be hell. At least it's down in the heart of the earth, so it's by hell. But it doesn't say hell, it says the bottomless pit. And there rose up smoke out of the pit, and smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. All right. Keep reading. Um, these locusts in verse 8 had hair of women and teeth of a lion. Uh, it goes on to talk. Now, verse 11. Now they, the locusts, had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, which means destroyer or perdition. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon, which means destroyer or perdition. So there's an angel in the bottomless pit that comes out of the bottomless pit who is a destroyer, all right? Um, in Revelation 17, verse 8, we see this angel of the bottomless pit again, and it's, he's identified. He's identified as the beast or the, the Antichrist. The beast that thou sawest was, so he was alive before. He is not. He's not alive at the time John is writing the book of Revelation. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. That's just what we read about in Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, where the angel of the bottomless pit ascends out. And what was his name? His name was Apollyon and Abaddon, which means destruction and perdition. And where does he go? He goes into perdition. So this beast was alive before, and he goes into perdition. The great thing about the Bible is all you need to study the Bible is a cross-reference. What, Where have we heard about perdition before and someone that was alive going into perdition? Well, in John chapter 17, we read about it. John chapter 17. And verse 12. Almost there. John 17, verse 12, Jesus talking, He's talking about while he was with the, them being the disciples, if you read the whole chapter, but we don't have time for that. While I was with them, the disciples in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. None of them have I lost. Well, he did lose one disciple. Who did he lose? He lost Judas Iscariot. And what does Jesus call Judas Iscariot here? The disciple that he lost? The son of perdition. Well, what happened to Judas? He killed himself. As in another place, you hear that when Jesus was dining with Judas, he handed Judas, uh, he said, whosoever I hand this sop to, uh, and he that dippeth this sop in the cup with me, the same shall betray me. S-O-P, the sop, he handed it to Judas. S-O-P, son of perdition. That's a, that's a little nugget right there. Um, so this son of perdition is Judas Iscariot. When he died, what happened to him? Well, in Acts chapter 1, it tells us. He went somewhere. Did he go down into hell? Acts chapter 1, verse 23 and 25. 23 through 25. And they appointed two, Joseph called Bar Barsabbas, who was a surname Justice and Matthias. So they're trying to replace the apostles that were lost, one of them being Judas, because he killed himself. And they prayed and said, The Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether these two thou hast chosen, that they may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go where? To hell? No, he might go to his own place. Judas is the son of perdition. The son of perdition is used one other time in the Bible, and it's used in Second Thessalonians. It said Judas went to his own place. And it says the beast of the bottomless pit comes out of the bottomless pit. He was alive before, and he's not at the time John was writing the book, but he shall come out of the bottomless pit. And the beast is going to be identified in 2 Thessalonians as somebody. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's see here. 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of the Lord, if you read verse 1, shall not come except there falling, come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. Who is the man of sin? The son of perdition. That's Judas Iscariot. And it goes on to talk about how the son of perdition is going to go into the temple and, and, be, and say that he's God. Well, we know that's the Antichrist that does that. So let's put this all together. We know that Judas Iscariot was the son of perdition. We know that the son of perdition is the Antichrist. We know that the Antichrist, when Judas died, he went to his own place, not hell. We know that the beast was alive before, like Judas Iscariot was. He was dead at the time John wrote the, the book of Revelation. And he ascends out of the bottomless pit. Judas went to his own place, but Judas is coming out. And he becomes the Antichrist. Now, whether Judas actually comes out of the bottomless pit as Judas or if the spirit of Judas comes out, I don't know. I can't say for sure. But when you use the Bible to interpret itself, it's amazing what the book has in it. It's absolutely amazing. So the bottomless pit is something special where Judas Iscariot is right now. It's his own place that he comes out of. Now, there's one more place uh, called Tartarus. Uh, in in the Greek, and you see that in Second Peter uh, chapter two. There's one more place that people uh, talk about when they talk about hell. Second Peter chapter two, um, verse four. It's talking about angels that sinned. Second uh, Peter two verse four, and it says, "For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment." This is the place in the Bible where uh, it's Tartarus in the Greek, but they translated it to hell here. So there's another compartment down in hell, hell being the center of the earth or the realm of the dead, right? Where we know there's hell, there's, people, there's places of torment, there's obviously Abraham's bosom, there's obviously the bottomless pit, and there's this place called Tartarus um, where the angels went in change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So hell has a few different places. You can see why people get confused. But if you just read the book, you don't even look. You don't you don't have to know Greek or Hebrew for any of this. The Bible is perfectly fine in interpreting all this. But, uh, you know, when people start throwing around the Greek and the Hebrew and, and don't translate things and say Sheol and all that because they don't want to translate hell. You start air conditioning hell and it doesn't become real to people anymore. You have to get, look, hell is real. It's a place of torment where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever, it says. You don't just vaporize. You're eternally punished. When you die now and you're not saved, you go to hell and you wait until the judgment. And, and in Revelation it says, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So you go to be, you, you're waiting in hell burning it's kind of like prison it's kind of like jail you know if you get pulled up, if you kill somebody and they arrest you they put you in jail to await a trial and then you go to prison well that's the same thing you go to hell if you die now and you await your trial at the end when when jesus christ judges the world and then he sends you into the lake of fire so you get out of the fire and into the out of the frying pan into the fire right look guys hell's real and we need to be preaching it we need to be telling people it's a real place. It's got fire. I'm going to give you one more thing here. In Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 3. It has nothing to do with hell, but maybe just to give you a little admonishment. Ezekiel chapter 3. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, this is God talking to Ezekiel, Eat thou, uh, oh, where am I at? Uh, was it Ezekiel chapter 3? It was Ezekiel chapter 33. I'm sorry. Ezekiel, no. Ezekiel chapter 33. This is what I'm thinking of. Um, here we go. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land... Take a man of their coast and set for him their watchman. So it says, look, when God brings a sword and someone is a watchman that's supposed to look for God bringing the sword in judgment, if when he see the sword come, if he sees judgment coming upon the land, and he blow not the trumpet to warn the people, 
Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not the warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So what God's saying here is, look, if the trumpet blows and people don't listen, then the people who don't listen, the blood's on their own hand, head. However, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. You and I are the watchmen. We're supposed to warn people there's a real hell. And if you don't warn them, and they're judged, they're judged in their iniquity, verse 6, they're taken away in their own iniquity, but guess what? Their blood will, they, will I require, God says, at the watchman's hands. That's you and me. Hell's real, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just, you don't just go there and you're, it's not a state of consciousness. It's a real place with fire. And in the millennium, it'll be the lake of fire on earth. Where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever. But Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.